Hi, my name is Bonnie Blake. This is Live Journey Mapping, a lesson in trust, empathy, creativity, and spontaneity. My daughter is a member of a professional improv troupe, and while watching them perform one evening, I began to observe the process. The troupe members coaxed three unrelated prompts from the audience and spontaneously contrived characters, plot, and a setting from out of nowhere. Making a connection between the impromptu nature of creative brainstorming and an idea development course that I teach, I invited troop members to do a beginner's improv workshop with my idea development students. Here's a description of the course. In the Visual Communication Design program at Ramapo College, idea development is the first course where interaction design students learn to apply the principles of human-centered design to a project. Being taught the basics of improvisation by professionals was an experiment that I didn't want to pass up. During the class visit, when the improv members came, and they engaged my students in what they refer to as short-form games. These are quick, self-contained exercises with static rules that students played in groups of four to five during the class. To play the game successfully, players have to think quickly, trust themselves and their fellow group members, and support one another, and also maintain a non-judgmental attitude. So students will be free to express themselves. The conditions that make for a successful improv game are similar in many cases and identical to those required to ensure a productive brainstorming session in my idea development course. While improv doesn't require rehearsal in a traditional sense, there are no lines to be memorized or movements to be rehearsed, there is a rehearsal process that exists. Improv troops need to spend a great deal of time getting into proper headspace so they can generate off-the-cuff ideas and accept and work with their team members' ideas. This notion of readying oneself to perform also closely parallels design thinking methods. Some examples of improv rehearsal games or warm-ups, drills and games practiced before a performance or at the beginning of a workshop that help generate ideas and free thinking include yes and word association, gift giving, and what are you doing later? Word association. During word association, players first get in a circle. The game starts with a prompt word. Player one says the word that they thought of in response to the prompt word. The next player in the circle, player two, says the word that they thought in response to the previous word. The circle continues with players responding only to the previous word said. This is called A to B thinking, where players verbalize their thoughts out loud and explain how they got from point A to B. So here's an example of a word association A to B. Player one, you said bird. Bird makes me think of flight. The new word is flight. Player two, you said flight. Flight makes me think of airplanes. The new word is airplanes. You can expand the parameters by having players thinking in terms of A to the C or A to the D. To do so, players simply need to make more connections out loud before the new word is generated. So here's an example of A to the C. Once again, the prompt word is bird. Player one says, you said bird. Bird makes me think of eggs. Eggs make me breakfast. The new word is breakfast. Player two. You said breakfast. Breakfast makes me think of family. Family makes me think of vacation. The new word is vacation. So the idea is to have players fully in the moment of creating and not thinking about the concepts that existed in the distant past 
only the immediate past, and also trusting. It also allows participants to see how it's more valuable to have more people working on a concept, as everyone's reference point will be different. The larger variety of references for association, the more expansive and diverse the associations will become. So this is the story of how we ended up doing live journey mapping. While I was planning the UX design course that students from Idea Development would be taking in spring 2020, I decided to experiment once again with improv in conjunction with journey mapping, a phase of the students' research. In the UX design course, students collaborate in teams to research, identify, and produce a working prototype that effectively solves or improves an aspect of a person's life. Students actively learn all the steps involved in the UX process from design research to the final prototype. Journey mapping is a significant step in the UX process. It also represents a turning point in a student's project because it brings their persona character story to life in a narrative form. And like rapid prototyping, journey maps provide valuable opportunities for designers to spot minor flaws and make improvements in order to correct course and ensure a more successful outcome. As the Nielsen Norman Group states, journey mapping combines two powerful instruments, storytelling and visualization. In a nutshell, improv also combines storytelling and visualization. The objective in improv is to entertain and delight an audience by acting out stories. The positive outcome for improv audience members is an improved mood and or, or a happy state of mind. Journey mapping, on the other hand, tells a story about a situation where an app was used in order to improve someone's life and ensure a positive outcome. So once again, there's an opportunity to use improv in order to see the user's experience from yet another perspective. It made sense to me that in user experience design, having a student create a journey map and then watching fellow students act it out in the classroom could yield some unexpected and valuable insights. So the journey. Most students in the spring UX course had some knowledge of improv and were prepared to have other students improvise their journey maps once they were complete. However, and I'm sure you can all relate to this, on March 12, 2020, my campus closed down and courses had to be delivered remotely. We obviously weren't prepared for this, so we kind of had to rush around and, and improv, pardon the pun. By the time students completed their journey maps, they were at home, sheltered in place due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Rather than cancel the live mapping project, we arranged to have professional improv people act out students' journey maps while the other teams observe via Zoom. With the help of our improv actors, a safe space that was set up in their improv theater, Rhino Comedy, which was and still is closed to the public, but they did open it for myself and a couple of other people, those being the, the people who were doing the improv. Student teams connected remotely at their assigned time a few minutes prior to filming. The improv actors were shown rough drafts of the journey maps. I think I have some uh, examples here. They were obviously very rough. So they were shown the rough drafts and they had an opportunity for a few minutes to ask the, the designers some questions. Then after that, we started, we started filming. The improv actors got into character and at times they started laughing in the middle of it and one person would begin to laugh and others would. And the next thing you know, everyone would be laughing, but it actually turned out to be a good omen because it created a very relaxed environment and it balanced the serious with the creative very well. 
I included two of the finished live journey maps at the end of this presentation. Well, actually, I think it, it might not exactly be at the end, but I am going to show you a little bit of a couple of clips. But if you want to go back and see the full versions of the clips, feel free to, to do so because I believe uh, it's going to be in a folder. Student collaborators were asked to informally assess their live journey map sessions after this happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, one example right now in this presentation so you can see what it looked like. Obviously the journey maps were very, very different and this student chose to use some sort of, a, you know, like digital electronic, uh, I guess it was like, a, you know, they already had like templates and you could throw things in it, which was fine. It didn't make any difference. It's not terribly detailed. It's an app called HeartAid. What you can gather from looking at her journey map is that a woman is upset, work friend gives her up, tells her about this app, and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to show you a brief moment of this clip. Later on that night, Hey, Sophia. Hey, Julie. Yeah, um, I first wanted to thank you again for the party app. Oh, did you try it out? Uh, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of, of that particular app. And um, here are a few uh, preliminary uh, sort of veering toward uh, hi-fi prototypes uh, that, the, um, that the student sketched out. And actually her animated one is in this presentation and it's also in, I believe on a folder on the UCDA uh, website. <clears throat> so uh, this was Hard Aid. Uh, this is another one that I'm going to show you part of it. This was quite a challenge. Uh, it's called Parlay. It's an app that is for young people who move to other cities for jobs. They don't know anyone and they're trying to connect, make friends, and sort of um, uh, re-infuse their social life with uh, buddies and, and, uh, and fun in their life. So it's not all work. So um, it's a lovely app. Uh, so let me show you what these two people did. Now, these were two women. The, um, the, the student who did this, uh, Jack Lincoln, used uh, for his journey map, he, he used a mail. Uh, and so uh, one of these, the, the actors had to pretend she was a man in order to conform with the, uh, with the journey map, which actually is kind of funny. So I'll show you a few minutes of this, and then I'll conclude. OK, we're only. <clears throat> Alright, let's uh, try to download this app. Parlay. Uh, 
All right. Hey, that's a nice looking app. Hmm. Let's see. Looks like they got people that are new in town, just like me, that I can contact right away. Maybe they're interested in a volleyball game, man. Looks like uh, there's a guy named Tyrone that has a volleyball game today at four. Let's see if I can get this guy a call. Check it out. Ring, 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 ring. ring. Hello? Hey, I'm um, looking for a Tyrone. Oh, this is Tanisha, Tyrone's girlfriend. Are you calling about the volleyball game? I'm one of the organizers. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I was calling to see uh, how I can join up on the volleyball game. Is there a space for me? Oh, yeah, we have 11 players already, so you could be the 12th. Uh, what's your name? Uh, uh, Anthony, but you, you can call me Tony. Uh, you can see why it must have been hard for students to keep a straight face because they, uh, the, t the two uh, improv artists are comedians and uh, so it <laughs> took a long time to, and, uh, to, to actually do that. And it was, um, if, if you want to watch it, uh, like I said, I believe it's, if it's in the folder and it's, 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 it was really well done. Um, I'm just going to show you a few a few results that some of the students did. All of their work, um, of course, I'm sure a lot of you teach UX courses, UI courses. Uh, everyone created an app. Most of them worked in pairs, as I mentioned before. Um, in general, the students, uh, when I met with them on Zoom, were very, very happy with the results of their live journey map. Um, and they made a couple of comments that I thought were, were kind of insightful. Uh, some thought that the, the journey map and the filming should have been done earlier uh, so they'd have more time to add features because after they saw this video, they realized they needed some more. But of course, it was way too late then. Uh, another student um, felt that the film, uh, you know, filming their project gave a heightened sense of reality to it. So it made it seem very real to them. And in turn, it made them feel more responsible for its outcome. In general, they all, well, I wouldn't say all of them, I'd say about nine tenths of them felt very proud of their work and what they did. They did work hard and they did a great job. And as their instructor, I'm very happy with the final app prototypes and uh, the students were able to virtually present during finals week and everything actually worked. They also submitted a digital case study, which was quite comprehensive. It was about 30 pages and included a link to their live journey maps as they interview for internships or entry level positions as interaction designers. They vowed to provide me with feedback on prospective employers reactions to their live journey maps. My final reflection, and this is part of the crowd, some of them didn't show up because they were uh, kind of nervous about having to perform in public. This was the day, uh, this is the idea development course from fall of 2019. As a result of the UX course, the spring 2020 semester and the sudden disruption of all aspects of college life, I've come to realize that the classroom space is not necessarily a physical space. Rather, the students, instructors, and their mindsets and imaginations create the space, and the location is inconsequential. And I know that moving forward, we're all their technology, but they also need the human touch and the human experience. Thank you very much.